reading the word with Luther for June 9th. I'm reading to you today from the Epistle of Jude, the third and the fourth verse in the Revised Standard Version of the Holy Bible. Here we go. Beloved, being very eager to write to you of our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. For admission has been secretly gained by some who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly persons who pervert the grace of our Lord God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Word of God. Luther writes about those two verses. The reason I wish to write unto you, says Jude, is that you may continue in the faith which you have heard. There are already preachers at hand which advocate other doctrines than that faith. By these the people are gently and unsuspectingly led astray from the true way. Upon these false teachers the sentence of judgment, he says, has already been pronounced long ago, namely, that they are condemned. We now understand this quite well, since we have learned that no one can become righteous or be justified before God by his own works, but through faith in Christ alone, that he must rely upon the work of Christ as the chief good and only support. Then, after faith is present, whatever man does should be done for the benefit of his neighbor. The grace of God, which holds Christ before us, that is offered and given unto us through the gospel, with all that he has, these men use only for leading impure lives. They call themselves Christians, praise the gospel, but live in wantonness and eating and drinking. They boast that they are not in a secular but in a spiritual state, and on that account claim all good, honor, and luxury. The denying of the Lord God is not with the mouth, for they confess that God is Lord. But they deny Christ in their deeds and works, considering him not as their Lord, but being their own lords unto themselves. For when they preach that fast, pilgrimages, church institutions or ceremonies, chastity or celibacy, obedience to the rules of the ecclesiastical orders, poverty and the like, are the way to salvation, they lead people astray. They say nothing about Christ, as though he were not needed and his work of redemption of no value. Thus they deny Christ, who has bought them with his own blood. They know not that our salvation is founded upon faith and love. They are offended when we reject their works and preach that Christ alone must help us with his works. So we should rely upon Christ for salvation, and not upon our works. We must rely upon him, but our neighbor relies upon us for our good works. He needs our good works. So, um, have faith in Christ alone, but give your neighbor something to believe in. Uh, do something good for your neighbor today, and perchance uh, your neighbor may come to see the Lord you have faith in, and have faith in him himself. May that be so. Let's pray. We have no God, Lord, above you. You alone are God. You are Master and Lord. Not works of the law. Not even doing good deeds for our neighbors. You are God. Yet, we know that being God, you call us to do good for our neighbor and to not do evil. So we ask for courage and strength and inspiration for uh, doing that today, even for the ways of doing it that would be according to your will. Your will be done for Christ's sake, in whose name we pray. Amen. Thanks for being with me today for reading the Word with Luther. Be back with me again tomorrow.